What if your desire was but the tip of an iceberg? And what if instead of trying to control how that desire shows up in your life, you actually got curious about it? And more importantly, what if the natural unfoldment of your desire had more wisdom to offer you than your predetermined idea of what your desire should look like? These are the questions that I wish to talk about in this video. I'm Saida Desilee, the author of The Emergence of the Sensual Woman, an advocate for inspiring women to live wildly magnetic and fiercely feminine lives. And yes, this month's delicious tip is all about desire, but more importantly, your actual relationship to your desire. So there were three questions I asked at the start of this video. The first was all about what if your desire was just the tip of an iceberg? And so I just want to give you an idea to contemplate. We're not going to go too deep into this, but just contemplate it. What if your desire was actually like the doorbell on a brand new door to a brand new building and you had no idea what was behind there, but you were drawn to press that doorbell. That is desire. And what if what lies behind that door is so magnificent, so outrageous, so incredible that your life is changed for it? That's really important to consider because our desires, in my mind, keep us in alignment with a deeper core calling. So that's all I'm going to say about that. But just consider that maybe, just maybe, your desire is actually guiding you along your life's path. The second question I asked is, what if you could you know, let go of being really controlling about how that desire shows up and just got curious about it. And this is actually a formula for successful relationships, for successful creativity. I mean, it is really a fundamental lifestyle awesomeness. So here's what it is. Instead of trying to control, when we try to control, at least for me, it's a sign that I don't trust. It's a sign that I'm not sure that this is actually gonna happen. And so I'm gonna force it to happen. I'm gonna do this and that and that and this and, and just make sure that this thing really happens in, of course, my predetermined idea of how it should happen. So that's really stressful. And so desire is actually not meant to be stressful. It's meant to inspire. Inspire us to action, of course, but also inspire us to receptivity. So the first thing we need is trust. Do you actually trust that this could be possible for you? That's all I'm going to say about that today too. Just feel into your being something you deeply desire to have in your life. And are you willing to trust that it is possible for you to have that, that it is possible for you to experience that? And a way that I do this, a little meditation as a hint, is I will practice uh, smiling to my heart and I will hold my desire in my heart and then I will actually allow it to realize itself in my heart as a visualization. And I will literally allow myself to feel the sensations of fulfillment. And that is so exquisite because whether or not the desire realizes itself in my life, I've already experienced its fulfillment in my heart. So give that a go and let me know how that goes for you. The last question is what's most important to me. It's the idea that perhaps the natural unfolding of our desire realizing itself has more wisdom to offer us than a predetermined idea of how we think it should be. And I believe this to be true for having an exceptional experience of life. If we're always in this place of predetermining our outcomes, why bother having the experience? We've already predetermined it. The thing that keeps us alive the thing that inspires us, the thing that invigorates us, the thing that fills us with energy is actually the mystery. It's not knowing. And it's the discovery of the unknown, peering into it, getting curious like a child with wonderment. That is the beauty. And in my experience, sometimes when I desire something, there's a lot of pieces that have to fall into place before I actually realize that desire in my life. And those pieces that need to fall into place and those internal changes that I need to experience, they're really important because they are literally our journey of life. 
And so for me, the end result, which is the desire, is fantastic, and I will celebrate when I have it. But the focused intent, the celebration, is in how it's unfolding. And that's where curiosity comes in, receptivity comes in, and actually having the ability to question myself and really see if I trust. So these are the things that I want you to consider when it comes to holding space for your own desire. Now with all these videos, I always give you a little challenge. So the main challenge here is, are you willing to consider that your desire is just the tip of an iceberg? Two, are you willing to get more curious about what it is that you're desiring and maybe a little more receptive about it? And three, holding the space for this desire, making it true in your heart and knowing and trusting that yes, it's going to be absolutely amazing when it's realized. And yet the moments that take you to that are just as beautiful. Being willing, so this is the question, being willing to experience all that life brings to you on the way to your desire. Are you willing to do that? I, of course, want to hear from you, so make sure you leave me a comment below this video. What is your relationship to desire and what goes on as you consider the questions I just asked you? As always, there's a lot going on on my website, so please come and join me there. Articles, more videos, and some awesome offers to play with me live. That's all on the website. I really look forward to supporting you to live a wildly magnetic and fiercely feminine life. Go, 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 money,